This new year can bring on all kinds of new goals and resolutions to help better ourselves. Eat right, exercise more, simplify, get organized, get out of debt, the list goes on and on. There's something about a fresh calendar year that propels us to make changes, to step up and incorporate better choices for our families. Yet often, in life, our greatest battles can be with our own selves, the struggle with our flesh, the battle against our own sinful nature, etc. Just because we're believers doesn't mean that struggles go away. In fact, it might even be more difficult to choose what's right, to walk wisely. And you can be assured, the enemy will work hard against those who are striving to be a light in a dark world. The Apostle Paul penned it best when he wrote, For what I want to do, I do not do, and what I hate, I do. Romans 7.15 so how do we rid ourselves of that kind of toxicity? Hello, weirdos. I'm Darren Marlar. Welcome to the Church of the Undead. If you listen to my podcast, Weird Darkness, then you, just like me, love creepy stuff, stories about ghosts, unsolved mysteries, unexplained disappearances, true crime, aliens, cryptids, etc. At the same time, I also love God, and sometimes my love for Him and my love for the macabre interact or even collide, and that's why I created the Church of the Undead podcast. This is also a place I can share episodes not related to Weird Darkness, which are relevant to those who suffer with depression, need some encouragement and guidance, or for those who love or are just curious about the God of the Bible. It doesn't matter if you are a weirdo in Christ or just a weirdo, everyone's welcome here at the Church of the Undead. And I use the word undead because, as Romans 6.11 says, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Full disclosure, I might use the term pastor because I've branded this feature as a church, but I do not have a theology degree, nor did I ever go to Bible college. I'm just a guy who gave his life to Christ in 1989 and has tried to walk the walk ever since and has stumbled a lot along the way. Because, like everybody else, I am an imperfect, heavily flawed human being. So please don't take what I say as gospel. Dig into God's Word yourself for confirmation, inspiration, and revelation. That being said, welcome to the Church of the Undead. There are certain attitudes and choices that, over time, can become toxic to us they'll lead us down the wrong path or cause us to drift away from what's good and what's God. Although we know it to be true, it seems that we just feel helpless to lay down the old nature. It's all too easy, especially in times of pressure and stress, to pick up what we're most familiar with. And so, the toxic cycle goes on, and our hearts become hardened. Here are a few toxic attitudes we need to rid ourselves of as we step into this new year. Pride. This is the very sin that led to Satan's downfall from an angel of worship to the enemy of God. In a world that promotes self and looking out for number one, it can seem like we're going against the natural current of society whenever we choose humility over pride. And the truth is, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. We're going against that flow so that God can be greater within us and our own need for self can become less. It's not going to be easy. And often, we're so consumed with attitudes of pride that have entrenched their ways within our lives and families, it's really hard to break free. God will often allow difficulties and struggles along the way to remind us of our weakness, that He is greater. Laying down this attitude of pride and its daily choice, it can take us to a deeper place of intimacy with God, and just to be better people in general. Because it's there, that we're reminded how much this life is not just about us, but about Him living in us, through us as we help others. Our focus on what is most important is going to change. Galatians 6 verse 3 says, If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. And Proverbs 11 too says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Another toxic attitude we need to get rid of is worry. This is a really difficult battle for many people. 
When faced with hard situations, our natural tendency is often to react first with fear or worry instead of being propelled by a spirit of faith. God reminds us over and over in His Word that we don't have to fear. He tells us how attempting to carry the cares and worries of this world on our own will burden us down. We can never live fully free if we're choosing to live in a constant frenzy of worry and fear. Immersing ourselves in the truth of His Word and praying first to Him instead of reacting with anxious thoughts will change us from the inside. And over time, we'll start to recognize that the very things that once caused us great fear no longer hold the power over us. God is able to set us free from the burdens that seek to hold us back. This is not an easy road to leave fear and worry behind. It's a daily choice. But God's Spirit within you is greater than anything you will face in this life. It doesn't mean that we will never be tempted towards anxious thoughts or that we won't ever feel afraid. We just won't allow it to control us anymore. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Something else that's toxic that we need to get rid of? Anger. Perhaps more than ever, these past few years have seen a significant divide in our nation. And anger, harsh words, ridicule, and bullying have been rampant, not only in our own relationships, but online, too. There is this huge need that often rises up within us to just be right, or to let somebody else know that they're wrong and how wrong they are. But an attitude of anger and cruel speech does nothing to create positive change. It only makes the divisions greater. Many times in our own families, we're most impatient and easily angered with those that we say we love the most. Maybe it's because we feel most comfortable in those relationships, but it never makes it right. Harsh words, putting others down to make ourselves look better, anger spewing out on all those around us, it's only making us look bad. And it's really not about the other person or people that we're even angry at. It's about us, our own hearts. God alone has the power to break through all of that hardness. He can change us into people of kindness, self-control, and encouragement. It may even seem like a miracle to those around us, but we have to choose to allow Him to work in those areas, and it'll be a powerful testimony of His work in our lives. James 1, verses 19 and 20 says, My dear brothers and sisters, Take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Another toxic thing we ought to get rid of is addictive behaviors. We are a people that longs to find peace and fulfillment, but often looks for it in the wrong places. Addictions are rampant in our world. They remind us that we can't be soothed by anything, even the very things that we're addicted to, because it never fully satisfies. Some have lived for too many years addicted to drugs, alcohol, pornography, the list goes on and on. Many have tried to hide their addiction so that nobody would know about it, almost as if they realized deep inside how much it's controlled their lives. Life is short. Don't waste another year stuck in that mess. Let go, however hard it might be. Cry out to God for healing, for help to live free of these things that seek to control us. He promises to help you. He never leaves us on our own to work through our struggles alone. He alone can lift us up out of the deepest pit that we find ourselves in. We are never too far gone. We're never too far out of God's loving grasp. Reach out for Him instead of reaching for that thing that's caused havoc in your life. He will set you free and will bring restoration to the years that have been lost. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. Up next, materialism. That's pretty toxic as well. In a world that places so much value on what we have, or gives importance to those who seem to have climbed the ladder to success, it's hard to choose the life where these attitudes don't affect your own way of thinking. God never says that money and things are bad. He says that the love 
of money is wrong when we give our attention and adoration to other things. We can be rich and materialistic and have a great love of money, or we can be broke and materialistic and have a great love of money. Either way, it's wrong because our hearts aren't set first on God, recognizing that He is our provider and that all we have is really His. May this year be a year that we choose to live differently. May we be known as great givers instead of hoarding what we have. May we be known as those who understand that money and things can't ever really make us happy, but that people and our relationship with Christ is what's most important above all. May God set us free from the hold that money and material possessions seek to have over us and help us to be wise with all that He has provided. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Unforgiveness. That's really toxic. This very attitude and choice, unforgiveness, can be one of the greatest downfalls in many lives and can lead to other wrong patterns of living. Often it's the inability to forgive that can cause deep anger, pride, anxiety further down the road. We falsely think that we've conquered the person who hurt us by withholding our forgiveness, yet really what we've done is given them full power over us, and it becomes a vicious cycle of toxic patterns and behaviors. Forgiveness might never feel right, but it will always be right. God tells us to forgive. He propels us to move forward. He reminds us that He is the one who will restore and heal, and that we all will stand before Him one day so we can let go and truly live free. Colossians 3, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And Mark 11, verse 25. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. And finally, I have left the most important for the last. When it comes to toxicity, we need to get rid of our apathy towards God. There is no greater change we could make for any day, any year, than this one. As Christians, we must be people of prayer. We must have hearts that are drawn towards God's Word and ask Him to give us a desire to walk with Him daily. Everything within us and all things around us will often war against this very choice. Though we know in our hearts how much we need God every day, the other things that call our name feel more pressing. Make the choice every day to come to Him, even if only for a few moments. Open the Bible, pray, and keep leaning in close to Him, even if you don't feel anything different right away. In time, His words and truth will change your heart and mind. He promises to renew us through seasons of refreshing when we let go of our own desires and sinful nature and choose Him first. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Here's the truth. Our hope is found not in our ability, but in Christ alone. He understands our weaknesses and promises to help us. He came to set us free from the sin that we still struggle with daily. He came to renew us and give us fresh purpose. His Spirit within us will be our guide, our help, at every step along the way. We just have to follow His lead and desire more than anything, to live first for Him. Don't let old ways hold you back any longer. Press through, live free, and choose what is better. This episode of Church of the Undead was adapted from the article Seven Toxic Attitudes to Let Go of This New Year by Debbie McDaniel for Crosswalk.com. If you like what you heard, share this episode with others who you think might also like it. Maybe the person you share it with will want to become a weirdo, too. You can find a link to the original sources that I used for this message in the show notes. If you want to get in touch with me, 
You can find all of my social media, postal address, and other contact info at WeirdDarkness.com. That's also where you can find the daily Weird Darkness podcast if you like creepy true stories of the paranormal, unexplained true crime, and all things strange and macabre. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me, weirdos, and until next time, Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless. Yeah.